there's some fascinating information I want to share with you regarding iodine that goes way beyond the thyroid. So it is true that the lion's share of iodine is stored inside your thyroid, but there's also iodine in the breast tissue, in the uterus, in the ovaries, in the prostate, and I'm going to tell you why, in the sperm, in the stomach, in your lungs, and especially in your brain, okay? The front part of your brain that involve cognition, focus, memory, concentration. And this is why if a infant is deficient in iodine at birth, they're going to have some problems with their IQ. They're going to have decreased intellectual capacity. And so iodine is important and not just for your thyroid, for other things as well. Now, the other interesting thing about uh, iodine is the requirements for iodine, the RDAs. It's roughly in America, it's about 150 micrograms, not milligrams, but micrograms. But what's interesting about that is if you take a look at Japan, they consume on average per day between 1,000 to 3,000 micrograms of iodine. And they don't have nearly the problem with breast cancer, with female reproductive issues, and many of the other iodine deficiency problems that we have in the U.S., there just is no uh, agreement in the scientific community on how much iodine we really need as far as a therapeutic dose. Um, they do state that the upper limits should be no more than 1,000 micrograms, but that's kind of an arbitrary number because people have taken a lot more without any problems. In fact, if you have way too much iodine and create the same exact symptoms as a deficiency in iodine. Now, there's two general types of iodine, the type that should be used topically in the body not internally, like povidone iodine. That's great for fungal infections on your toes or even a skin tag or a wart, but you shouldn't take that orally. There are other types of um, iodine that you can take orally, but I would recommend taking it as a food base, whether it comes from actual food like shellfish or even better yet, sea kelp, which is seaweed. It comes in a package from nature that has all the other trace minerals and things that are connected with it. Because anytime you take one of anything in the body, you have to realize that you could throw off other things as well, especially when we're getting into the trace minerals. But you're more protected and you're going to tolerate it more if you take it from a food source like sea kelp. Of course, the key about sea kelp is making sure it's high quality. It comes from a, an ocean that is very, very uh, pristine and healthy without uh, heavy metals because you don't want contaminated, toxic, heavy metals in your sea kelp. Now, there's some fascinating applications of using iodine to help with various body conditions. And one of the big things that iodine does is it helps to regulate estrogen, especially if there's too much estrogen in the body, as in estrogen dominance. So what does that mean? It means it can help you with heavy periods, periods that go on for too long. It can help with something called fibrocystic breast. In fact, relating to that topic, one of the best ways to identify an iodine deficiency is through just the symptom of having breast tenderness. Most of the time when a woman experiences tenderness of the breast, they're really just experiencing an iodine deficiency. So you can use iodine on fibrocystic breast, ovarian cysts, endometriosis, fibroids, because you have high levels of iodine in the ovary, in the breast tissue, in the uterus. Also, iodine can be used for a prostate enlargement. Why? Because as men get older, their testosterone goes down and the relative ratios of estrogen goes up. So iodine is known to help uh, prostatic enlargement. But iodine is also good for other things like PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. It's good for cystic acne. It's good for TB, upper respiratory infections, because you have iodine in your lungs. Uh, probably to act as an antimicrobial because it's good as a defense mechanism for your immune system. Iodine is also good for something called croup, which is uh, kind of this wheezing uh, in the upper respiratory tract where you get this uh, high-pitched sound when you're breathing in. Usually you see this in infants or even this uh, excessive weird cough, which actually sounds like a dog barking, as well as asthma. I already mentioned toenail fungus. It's a good remedy for that because it's antiviral, antibacterial, antifungal, and anti-candida. I've done a video on how you can use iodine to help remove an, a wart as well as a skin tag. I'll put that link down below. And let's not forget, 
in the importance of the thyroid. So having enough iodine can actually help you to lose more weight. It can help you with brain fog. It can help you when you're excessively cold and have dry hair and dry skin and even constipation because it supports the thyroid gland and even depression as well. But unless you consume food, okay, that is either from the sea or from vegetables that are grown on the coastline, chances are you're not going to get a lot of iodine in your foods because if it's not in the soil, it's not going to be in the plant. And so there's always going to be a very, very tiny amount of iodine in the soil. But in certain areas of the country, you could have literally a hundred times less iodine in those vegetables than vegetables that are grown by the coast, close to the ocean. There is a bit of iodine in eggs, dairy, as well as iodized salt, and even sea salt. But with sea salt, there's going to be just uh, small, small amounts. Now, another thing I want to mention is that you can't actually have an allergy to iodine. Okay, so some people have an allergy to uh, shellfish, for example, that has iodine. You might need to get your iodine from just straight iodine. If someone is deficient in iodine, the body is going to allocate or recruit iodine and make sure you have enough for the thyroid. So it'll pull from different tissues, and that can keep you deficient in certain parts of your body and sufficient in other parts. One of the most accurate ways to measure iodine, because the problem is if you get a, a urine sample or even a blood sample in the morning, you can have a false positive because um, you have the lowest amounts of iodine in the morning. So the best way to assess iodine is a 24-hour urine iodine test. Another simple test would be just to basically take a little drop of uh, povidone iodine, put it on your skin, okay, maybe on the inside of your, your arm or your leg or your thigh, and then just cover an area like uh, maybe an inch by an inch, and then see what happens within one hour. You can put maybe like a little patch over it or a Band-Aid, and if it disappears in one hour, chances are you are deficient in iodine. You need more because your body is sucking it up. But if it's still there after an hour, chances are you probably have enough. Now, of course, that's a crude way of measuring it, but it's just one indication. And like I said before, breast tenderness is, a, is another uh, classic symptom of a deficiency of iodine. Well, a couple other ways that people are deficient is consuming uh, maybe excessive amounts of raw cruciferous vegetables because there's certain compounds in the cruciferous vegetables that tend to bind up that iodine. Also, if you consume uh, millet, soy, sweet potato, you can also have the same problem. People that are, are vegan, plant-based, have to be very careful because uh, they're usually eating plants that are deficient in iodine and they don't consume shellfish. But on the other hand, if they have sea kelp, they're going to be okay. If a woman is pregnant or lactating, the demand for iodine goes up. So they should make sure that they take a little bit more. Other things compete for iodine, like um, fluoride and bromide. If someone is on a low salt diet because they have high blood pressure, because the doctor told them to get off the salt, uh, they can also be deficient in iodine just from not having enough uh, of the iodine in the salt. But of course, that would have to be either iodized salt or sea salt. There's some other uh, chemicals that commonly create problems for iodine. Perchlorate, that's like a chemical waste product from fertilizers that they put in the land, and then the runoff goes into the water supply, and then it ends up in your water. So perchlorate blocks iodine, as well as nitrates, which is another waste product from fertilizers. So the absolute best way to get your iodine is through a little sea kelp. Uh, you can take some on a regular basis. Just take whatever is recommended on the back of the label, but also start consuming more shellfish to make sure you have enough as well. Now, I created another video that has gotten millions of views, and this relates to using iodine to get rid of skin tags and warts. If you haven't seen that video, check it out. I put it up right here.